Number one says here are two expressions whose product is a new expression A. Andre says that any real number can go into either of these boxes and A will be a polynomial. Is he correct? So we can see um, that this first box is just the coefficient of a variable. Okay, so any number can certainly go into this one. Okay, you could have a negative 4x cubed. You can have a square root of 3x cubed. You can have a 1 half x cubed. Okay, any number is certainly allowed to go as the coefficient. Now, this one is an exponent. So in polynomials, exponents have stipulations. Okay, so exponents can only be non-negative integers. So non-negative whole numbers essentially is what integers are. Okay, so there can't be any decimals. It can't be negative. You can't have square roots. Okay, so he cannot just put any number in since we have an exponent with um, this a box. So one of the boxes is an exponent. Number two, Lynn divides um, the polynomial 2x squared minus 4x plus 1 by 4 and gets this. Is this a polynomial? Explain your reasoning. And yes, it's a polynomial because it's a bunch of terms, okay? And all of the exponents, okay, so the exponents that we have are 2 and 1, and those are non-negative whole numbers, okay? So there's one variable, okay? So it's all the same variable. So one variable, so we see x's, and then the exponents are all non-negative whole numbers, so yes. Number three, um, what is the result when any two integers are multiplied by each other? So remember, integers are positive and negative whole numbers. So if we multiply any two integers together, it's not necessarily positive because if we do negative two times three, those are both integers and that's negative. So it doesn't have to be positive. Um, so if we multiply together, are we always gonna get a negative integer? No, because we could do negative two times negative three and that's positive six. So it's not always gonna be negative. Um, and now I've gotten even numbers here. So if I did like negative five times three, that's gonna be negative 15. That's an odd number. So it's definitely not always gonna be even either, but it will always be another integer. So you're always gonna get positive or negative whole numbers when you're multiplying positive or negative whole numbers together. There's no way you're gonna get a decimal. Number four, Claire wants to make an open top box by cutting out the corners of a 30 inch by 25 inch piece of poster board and then folding up the sides. The volume in cubic inches of the open top box is a function of the side length X of the cutouts, write an expression. Okay, so again, I'll draw whoops, a little picture here of this cutout. So it's gonna be 30 by 25. And then we're going to be cutting out little squares from the corners. So we're going to cut an X by X box out of each corner and then fold it up to make this open top box. And so then we just want to write the equation of the volume here. So let's um, draw on where those kind of folds are going to happen. So we're going to fold along this. And um, so this, we're gonna call this cutout X and that's gonna be all around on every side. We're gonna cut out X by X. So now that's gonna become the height of the box, okay? And when we do a volume expression, we're gonna have to do length times width times height. So we're gonna have to multiply by the height for sure. So I'll put that in. That's gonna be the height of these folds when we fold them up. Then we also need the length of these sides, okay, of this base of the box. So we're going to need both of these sides that we're going to multiply by. So remember, this one started at 30 inches, and then we're going to subtract off two X's. 
So this one is 30 minus 2x is long. And this one here started at 25. So this one is going to be 25 minus 2x is whatever x happens to be. So then we're going to multiply by 30 minus 2x and multiply by 25 minus 2x. So this will be our length times our width times our height for our volume. And then what is a reasonable domain here? So you want to look at this shortest side because we couldn't um, go more than halfway. You can't cut more than halfway because then this one doesn't have anything to cut. So that shortest side is the one that helps us figure out the domain. And so we're going to take the shortest side divided by 2. We can't go any more than that. So 25 divided by 2 gives us 12.5. So our cuts have to be anywhere between 0 and 12.5 inches. Number five, identify the degree, the leading coefficient, and the constant for each of these. Um, so the degree, remember, is the highest exponent that you see. So the highest exponent. So let's find the degree of all of these first. Okay, so look for the highest exponent, and we see that here in this term. We see the five, so the degree is five. In this polynomial, we see it here as a three. And in this polynomial, it's here as a 3. Then the leading coefficient is going to be the number in front of that highest degree term. Okay, so the number in front of the x here. So in this case, it's 2. In this case, it's a 1. So that's 1x cubed. In this case, it's negative 4. Okay, so always the number in front of that highest degree term. Then the constant is the term that has no variables with it. Okay, so has no x's with it. So in this case, it's negative 6. In this one, it's 2. And in this one, it's 5.4. Number six, which point is a relative minimum? So remember, that means that on either side of the point, the graph is higher than it. Okay, so it is the lowest point right next to itself. Um, so if we look here, okay, A is the relative minimum because each side is above it. So A is our relative minimum. We also have another one here. It's just not labeled. Okay, but this one and this one are our relative minimums on this graph. So point A would be the one that works in this case. <clears throat>